Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, so I've been out on vacation. I recently took a trip back to Malaysia and now I'm finally back and I'm going to produce more quality content uh, on YouTube this time around. So today I'm going to talk about five things new developers should learn when they're starting a new career. So technically this isn't just for new software engineers, but also for anyone who is joining a new role as a software engineer. So my first tip is building relationships. Now it's very, very important to build relationships, not just with your immediate team that you're in, but also with other people outside of your team, your PM, your tech lead, your manager, that's still within your own team. What I'm saying here is you want to build relationship outside of that. So, you know, talk to the person who's sitting right around the corner uh, in a different team, or maybe find some time uh, and just grab someone from your office to have lunch together, or just probably grab coffee. It always pays dividends to know all these people who are working on different things because they can help you expand your knowledge of the company and also expand your relationship with people within the company. And who knows, maybe one day you might need to work on some new feature and then they might be able to help you out. And also one of the important thing about uh, building network here is that you never know who's gonna stay, who's gonna move up, who's gonna move out of the company. So if you have a good connection with the people around the office, then when people leave, which you know in, in tech industry, it's very typical, I think the typical tenure for a tech company is about two to three years. So eventually when people leave, they might land on a new opportunity that might be a better fit for you. So you never know, it always pays to kind of know people around your office. And also another thing here is that once you build that network, uh, sometimes you're gonna land on people who are looking to mentor and kind of build relationship with people around them. Now tip number two is understand the scope of your work and why it matters. Now I see a lot of younger junior engineers uh, say that, you know, when I ask them, hey, what are you working on? They'll tell me that they're working on X, Y, and Z. And then when I ask them, why are you working on those things? They don't know exactly what, what, why, why it matters. Now that's a problem because as you expand in your scope and as you become a more senior engineer, you're expected to understand what is the impact, what is the scope and why it matters, right? Because you're, you won't be always be the person taking orders from your manager or from higher up. At some point, you'll be the person driving those decisions and advocating for those changes yourself. So as you grow as an engineer, you want to really understand the scope and not just take it blindly that, hey, you know, you have to do this stuff, okay? Understand, take the time to really understand why it's important, why it matters, what is the deliverable here, and how does that impact things in the bigger scope of things, right? So that's very important. And that's, you know, one of the top advice I always give uh, junior engineers who are starting in a new job not just take orders from people, but understand what you're doing and why it matters. So tip number three, learn to expand your scope. Yeah, as, as a new person on the team, right, you're, you probably have a set of pretty well-defined scope within the team. So maybe you're working on the back end or maybe you're working on the front end. It doesn't really matter. What you should learn early on here is that you always want to expand your scope. So say that you're given this well-defined project, right? And you work on it for a little bit and you notice that, hey, this project is not going so well. It's, it's moving slower than it should be because of, you know, factor X, Y, and Z. So as part of expanding the scope, you can start looking into X, Y, and Z and how to improve them and then propose that to the team so that you can, people can see that you're actively thinking about how to make things better, not just for the team, but also for everyone else around you. As an engineer, you'll start out, I like to think of this as the onion analogy, right? So my, well, one of my mentors talk, taught me this, which is when, when you're expanding your scope, there's an area of circle, right? Think of it as like an onion, you have multiple layers there. Your area of competency is the core layer and then you have a layer 
outside of it, which is the things that could potentially impact you. Now, the gap in between your core competency and the outer layer, that's where uncertainty lies, right? That's where anxiety really comes in, depression comes in. So as you grow as an engineer, you want to learn how to expand your scope, right? Grow your set of core competencies so that you can minimize that gap in between things that can impact you, core competencies. So once you minimize that, that's how you grow as an engineer. So tying that back to my point, expanding your scope, that's when people really going to see that you are actively thinking about how to improve things, how do you make things better, and that's where you grow your skills, not just as an engineer, but also as a leader. Okay? Now, something that could be more actionable here could be, first thing is, you know, sit in and not on, on more meetings, right? Even if you're not invited as part of the core group, but it's okay. You can just kind of come in and say like, hey guys, can I join in and kind of take take meeting notes? Uh, I, I think a lot of people won't oppose to that because uh, they're always looking to see people who are genuinely interested in improving things for other people. So when you when you propose and when you volunteer yourself and your time to take notes for other people or to think about their problems. People love that. People will definitely appreciate you coming in and trying to help them solve their problems for them. All right, tip number four, offer to help. So in the company, regardless of size, scale, um, geographic location, whatever industry that you're in, there's always things broken within the company. So it could be either the recruiting pipeline, um, processes, uh, code that's broken, tests that are broken there are always, always things out there that are broken. Now, because of priorities, time, resources, so some people might not get to solve any of them. So that's up to you when you come in to offer to help those things. First, it gives you insight and it gives you exposure into things that you would not otherwise see yourself. Now, as a junior engineer, you have a well-defined work scope, okay? So given your own time, you're probably only expected to work on that set of things. Now, if you have additional time, maybe you know you put in some extra hours or if you do your work more efficiently, you can offer to help other people with solving their other problems. But from my own personal experience, the people who have grown the fastest are the people who offer to help others, okay? That's when you are solving things, you gain exposure into um, code that's outside of your regular scope and that's where you really get to know other people and build a relationship with them so last but not least my fifth advice here is read more now a lot of junior engineers when they join a new team their heads down focus on writing code all day they're not really spending time to read and really understand the scope and things that they're trying to work on so here's my advice to you if you're a new engineer joining a new team take your time to find and read documentation design docs meeting notes anything that you can find that is laying around your company that is the single highest leverage activity that you can do today that will help you infinitely to grow your knowledge grow your technical expertise as an engineer now, in a lot of companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, for example, uh, there is a culture of writing docs, right? That helps to keep track of knowledge, right? To make sure that when someone critical leaves the team, for example, none of, uh, none of that knowledge is gone and, and kind of disappears into the ether, right? So as a new engineer coming in, find those docs, understand the context and understand the history of how things became the way they are today. Because from there, you can learn a lot of things about why they designed it a certain way, what were the research they did to figure out the requirements for a project, and then what were the trade-offs that they made at the time. Maybe because of timing, they had to kind of cut some corners, or because of some resources, they had to shift things around a little bit. So once you spend your time to go through and read all the documentation, I bet you anything, you can learn and be the subject expert faster than anyone in the team. So there you go. Those are my top five tips. 
as a new engineer that you should learn and check out my channel, check out my website, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!